a bit about globally the things you own, because you are everywhere. And I, I was curious to this dust up, or at least not that you created, but certainly that's the way Silvio Berlusconi is reacting in Italy, saying that Rupert Murdoch's media are orchestrating attacks against me. They're launching a series of hostile attacks, and they are fanning the flames for pure commercial reasons. What's going on? It's nonsense. Uh, there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of comment about a, f a few months ago when he lowered taxes everywhere in Italy, all business taxes, except on satellite television, which he doubled. Um, and, you know, he does own the competition. Uh, but, uh, so you think that was targeted? Uh, yeah. And that tax did not apply uh, when he earned it. Um, so uh, that was business. Now, we, we have not retaliated or said anything about that at all. Um, I don't control what the editor of the Times says in London or the Economist, which has been attacking him, saying it's a disgrace to have him as Prime Minister for the last five years. Uh, the New York Times, God knows they have no influence there. <laughs> uh, uh, so... Um, but he, I think what he was saying is that the Times of London had taken particular relish in trashing him. He's quite wrong on that. Uh, what about uh, El Paez, the biggest newspaper in Spain, which has been publishing these very embarrassing pictures of him? Uh, so uh, and we haven't done any of that. Okay. Um, these are the pictures of the party he had with underage... Um, well, parties. Yeah. Parties. Okay. <laughs> Um, you, to another Times, the New York Times, the parent company, the Boston Globe, a crucial vote there that could mean uh, workers there having to make at least $10 million in cuts, or the New York Times is going to intervene with 23% across the board pay cuts for each and every worker. What do you make of that? Well, uh, you know, Boston is a very strongly unionized place, and they may find that difficult. But the, it's, a, it's a great newspaper, it's a great institution, the Boston Globe. Uh, I can't see it disappearing. Uh, like all newspapers, I think it'll change. Um, we're, we think of newspapers in the old-fashioned way, printed on crash wood, so to speak, with ink. Uh, it's going to be digital. In, within 10 years, I believe, nearly all newspapers will be delivered to you digitally, either on your PC or a new, uh, on a a development of the Kindle, shall we say. Right. Uh, something that's quite mobile, you can take around with you. Uh, communications are changing totally. The digit, we're moving into a digital age, and it's going to change newspapers. Uh, but if you've got a newspaper with a great name and a great reputation, and you're trusted, the people in that community are going to need access to your source of news. What we call newspapers today, I call news organizations, uh, journalistic enterprises, if you will. They're the source of news. And uh, people will, will reach it if it's done well, whether they do it on a Blackberry or a Kindle uh, or a PC. Do you worry, though, then in the process that people could be getting dumber about current events? And I only say that, I'll go ahead and admit my daughter gets all her news off these devices. And, and, and some of them are abbreviated versions. In other words, there's not going to be a very, very long, long story on an iPhone. And I'm, I'm just worried, not only for my daughter, uh, but, but about a generation that won't get or even want to get news in as much depth. Oh, I think they'll want to get it. Uh, they'll get it differently. Uh, it is true that the way they get it at the moment, you can get just, you can say, I only want to hear about two or three subjects. Right. Uh, but and, and I think people will miss a great deal not getting everything that you get in a newspaper. You may not read everything in it, but your, your eye catches things and you learn things you didn't expect to learn. And I think we'll get back to that when we get uh, these mobile readers which carry whole newspapers on them. Uh, and people, people need it. Look, it. It's the source of our democracy that we have newspapers. And if you're going to live in a community... Um, you're going to need to know, you want to know everything that's going on in that community uh, and everything that's going on in the world. Not just what's going on in the world, but also, you know, what's happening in the high school sports? Who were the best players last night? Everything. This can all be served digitally much more cheaply than it is now on a newspaper. But you, you, know, always have a, you always have a paper Wall Street Journal. You always have a paper New York Times. I can see the day, uh, maybe no. 20 years away, uh, where you don't. Where you don't actually have paper and ink and printing presses. I think it'll take a long time. Uh, I think it's a generational thing that's happening. 
but there's no doubt that younger people are not picking up the traditional newspapers. Um, back to the New York Times very, very quickly. Do you find it odd that the New York Times, as the parent company of the Boston Globe, is coming down very hard on, 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 on the unions there, uh, but on its own front pages um, bemoans the state of unions and how they're treated in this country today? Is there any mixed message there? Well, uh, the New York Times, I think, more than any other paper, uh, has this rule of church and state that the, the, right. the, the, the management uh, can't speak to the journalists. Uh, and the journalists have Should their they? say. Should they? Uh, well, I think in the end, uh, the viability of the newspaper and the, and the ability to pay jobs to journalists, for that matter, uh, someone's got, you know, the buck has to stop with the management.